Okay, so today we're doing word problems. Uh, the basic steps, you want to identify the variable, like if you're using, you know, x, what does x represent, or m, you know, whatever, whatever it represents. Translate the words to algebra. So you got to take a, you know, paragraph or a few sentences and kind of make an algebra expression or out of it. You probably use that equation to set up an equation. Typically, we're, we're setting up equations. And then you're going to solve that equation. So that's the basic four-step plan uh, to solve uh, word problems. There's different types. So let's talk about this type. So it's kind of a linear thinking here. So like a fixed cost, like an initial value, kind of like a y-intercept there, plus a per hour charge, per minute charge, per day charge. Um, that's an hourly rate or you know something like that. So um, this is a question about uh, cell phone plans, uh, which used to be set up a lot different than they are now. Uh, so this one charged you thirty dollars per month plus five cents per minute every minute over the allotted one thousand minutes. So uh, what that means is this: the fixed cost is thirty dollars, right? It's every month, no matter what. Um, even if you don't use the phone, it costs thirty dollars, right? Um, and you can talk up to a thousand minutes, but once you get past a thousand minutes, every minute over that is five cents a minute. So per charge type, so five cents a minute would be like. You know, 05 is 5 cents uh, a minute, maybe something like that. Last month's bill came and it was only, it was for 43.50. So then you would have uh, 43.5 as equal to the total cost, right? 30 plus. And that kind of makes sense. You could probably almost, you could almost solve this uh, right now. In fact, um, <clears throat> well, I do want to solve this because. Uh, something interesting happens. So if you subtract 30, you get 0.05 um, equals, I guess that would be 33.5. <clears throat> and then you're going to um, divide by 0.05. Divide by 0.05. And that's like multiplied by 20, but let's get our calculator out here. So 33.5 divided by 0.05. Okay, 33.5 divided by. I think I did that right. 670. So M equals 670. And so we never really established what M is. So M, every minute you go over a thousand is, you know, your, your minutes over, your overage. So I'm going to call M like your overage minutes, I guess. Overage, I'm not sure how to spell that. Uh, minutes. So we went over 670. So how many minutes did we actually talk in our cell phone? To answer the question that was asked, you actually have to take the 1,000 minutes plus the overage, so 1,670. So sometimes with word problems, you have to make sure you actually answer the question that was asked. Maybe you expect it to be, how many minutes did you go over? But that wasn't the question they asked. They asked, how many minutes did you talk in your cell phone? So always answer the question that was asked. You might have a simple interest problem. So uh, I stands for interest. P is the principal. That's how much you invest. R is the rate, always given as a decimal. And T is the time. So we're just going to plug into this equation. So interest is something the bank usually gives you um, for stuff, for putting money in there usually. She invests a portion of the money into a certificate deposit that earned 3%. She invests the rest of the money into another certificate deposit that earns 4.5%. So let's just kind of think through this. Um, so it says uh, there's like the 3%, uh, you know, money that's put there. Um, and then she also has the 4.5%. The so 4.5%, covered up the decimal there. Okay. Um, and that adds up to a total amount of $195.75. So this one's... Uh, you know, you're going to have to think about this one. This is going to take a little bit of work here. So let's let's think this through. So uh, big picture, I like to think big picture on stuff. So uh, I'm going to say it this way. The interest you earn at 3% plus the interest you earn at, I guess, 4.5% is going to equal your total interest and your interest total. So we know our total interest is 195.75. So um, you're really just going to plug in this equation. Well, 
Well, how do I figure out my interest at 3%? Well, fortunately, I have a formula for that, right? PRT. So we're going to use it. So we're going to say, okay, P is the principal. How much did she invest? I don't know. I'm going to call, I'm going to find uh, P is the principal for the uh, 3%. 3% CD. Okay, so um, so this is going to be P times the rate, which is 3%. Always write that as a decimal. Times the time, which is, is it one year? After one year, yes. So uh, times one is the time. This is measuring years. Plus, um, Whatever amount she invested there, we'll talk about that in a second, times the rate, which is uh, 0.045, and that's also one year, equals the interest total, which is definitely 195.75. And this is oftentimes the key to a word problem uh, to figuring it out. Um, so you've got to figure out, like, it's kind of like, it actually reminds me of the segment addition posture. I don't know if you've ever seen a problem like this in geometry. So it'd say this whole thing is 30. Uh, the distance from here to here is X. And then you say, well, what is the distance from here to here? And so it's the, the concept of the part plus the part equals a whole, but you kind of like do a reverse. And so, and many of you know how to do this. So you take the, the, the total or the, the whole, minus the part. So this would actually be 30 minus x. Does that kind of make sense? You might have seen that in geometry class. The same thing applies here. Uh, so we actually do know the total of, she invests $5,000. So if she, if P is $1,000 in the first investment, she would have 4,000 in the second. If, if P is 2,000, she owed 3,000 in the second. So it's just split up different ways. We don't know. So I would say it's the total of 5,000. Uh, minus p um, and so then you would just at that point solve this uh, equation so i showed my work i did some of the the, the multiplication and the calculator there and i got p equals 1950. of course the question is how much did she invest at each amount so this one was uh, at the three percent investment and then if you do uh, i guess it'd be five thousand uh, minus 1950 is $3,050 at the 4.5% level. And so you uh, you can figure it out that way. You had to set up the equation and solve. So a mixture problem. Um, so you've got uh, lima beans, which I don't know why anybody would eat lima beans, but lima beans and corn, and you're mixing them together to make this beautiful vegetable medley. So um, I like to do this in a very visual way. I usually just draw a picture of like a soup can kind of thing, uh, plus another soup can or a vat here is going to equal our uh, total here. So I, I like to put all my information and kind of organize it almost by color here. So like uh, this one was what, 90 cents a pound. So the lima beans was 0 0.90, 0 0.9 for the lima. And uh, the corn was 50 cents a pound, so 0.5 for the corn. And add those together to get our mixture. <coughs> Sorry, uh, and this is 0.65. And then the cost, um, Oh, 16 pounds of corn. So we do know it has 16 pounds of corn. So 16, um, I guess LBS here, 16 pounds of corn. So, boy, we don't really know um, the other information here. You have to kind of infer, okay, well, we don't know how much lima beans. So I'm going to say X. If we wanted to find X, X is the number of pounds of lima beans. Then the mixture would contain uh, a total amount of X plus 16 pounds, right? Um, so you pretty much got all the information there. It's real visual. And at this point, it's it's pretty easy to set up an equation, I, I think. So um, to figure out how many lima, how much lima it means, you take the uh, cost times the number of pounds. So it would just be 0.9 X plus 
x plus, the equation says plus, uh, the cost per pound for corn times the number of pounds, so 0.5 uh, times 16, equals uh, the cost times the number of pounds, so 0 0.65 times x plus 16. I'm just going to solve that problem. You solve that and you get uh, x equals 9.6. Just see what the question asks for. Um, so it says, um, how many pounds of lima beans? Um, so that's 9.6 pounds would be the answer. 9.6 pounds, you would add the units there in that case. Let's look at one more problem. So uh, distance, rate, and time, I call this dirt, uh, the dirt formula D equals RT, almost as like the word dirt. Um, so I like to draw these out. Uh, typically when I have a question like this, I'll kind of draw it um, and see what that kind of looks like. So um, let's see. So uh, Bill left his house at two, rode his bicycle. So, you know, he's at his house. He kind of rode his bicycle this direction for a while. He left at 2 p.m. Um, and he went 12 miles an hour. And he just kept going, right? And then uh, Mary uh, left the same place. And she's pedaling for a while. And she's going at a faster speed, I think. Let's see. Um, she's going 16 miles per hour. And she left at 210, so she left just a little bit later. So, but eventually, um, they caught up, right? So, so they, they did eventually kind of like, you know, meet together. Um, she caught up and they were at the same level. And what time did Mary catch Bill? So it's all about the time here. And so we're going to do distance rate time. So this is kind of like, um, you could, so usually sometimes you'll have like distance plus a distance equals total distance. That's not really the case here. We don't really even know the distance, but uh, we know the distance are equal. So the, the big concept here might be, let's see if this works, distance of Bill equal distance of Mary. Uh, so I think we could set up an equation like that. Let's, let's try that. Uh, those two things should be equal. They went the same distance. So rate times time is our formula. So rate would be, uh, let's see, Bill's rate is 12 times his time, and we don't know what his time is, I'm just going to say t, equals uh, Mary's weight rate, which is 16, times her time, which um, is 10 minutes less than, than Bill's. But you really have to think about this, because if you notice, like, this is kind of subtle, but it's miles per hour. These, this is 12 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, and it's 10 minutes. So you have to convert one way or the other. I think I'm just going to convert the time. So 10 minutes is like one-sixth of an hour, 10 sixtieths, right? So one-sixth, so this would be um, T minus one-sixth. And now we have our equation, and you can just solve that equation, and we should have it. So I kept solving, I got t equals 8 twelfths, which is, uh, I guess that's two thirds, four goes in there. So two thirds of an hour. So uh, at what time did Mary catch Bill? Um, so two thirds of an hour at 20 minutes. And two thirds of an hour is 40 minutes, right? That's two thirds of an hour, 20 minutes is, is a third. So 40 minutes from the time, uh, that's Bill's time, so from two, so it would be 2.40 be the time that they they caught up with, with each other um, so that's uh, that question and uh, you'll have some others it's not I didn't cover maybe every possible type of question but those are some of the big uh, types some some you just got to figure out sometimes it's kind of a riddle and you've got to just kind of you know set up your equation again to find your variables in this case the t was um, the time that it took for Mary uh, to catch up with Bill uh, so define your variables, even if you don't do it formally. Sometimes it helps to use meaningful variables like M, you know, for miles or, you know, use some meaningful variables and that, that helps a little bit at, at times. That's it.